All right, guys. Well, I apologize if there is a slight discontinuity between what you just saw and what we're seeing now. Um, and that's because I'm actually filming this about a week and a half after what I filmed the last part of the video. Um, that's because I actually did some of this wiring wrong. And instead of showing you the wrong part and then going back and correcting it at the end, um, I decided it's just better to show you the final corrected version of all this wiring so that you do it right in the first time um, in case you accidentally watched half the video and did it wrong. But let's go ahead and talk about um, the wiring for everything. So let's go ahead and talk about the injectors first. Um, so if you guys remember from my NA2T, these are the Palnet all-net fuel rails, and I have some 550cc OEM G35 injectors, um, and they basically have two wires that come out of them. Now this is one of the spots that I messed up at first. I thought that the wire coming from the ECU was a power, and then it just needed a ground, but it's actually the reverse. The ECU is a ground, um, so they need a switch to 12 volt. So one thing that I did, this is the positive battery terminal. Um, right off to the side, you can see right here, this is a relay that I have. Um, it's just triggered by a wire coming from the inside. It's actually the nitrous wire, but it doesn't go to the nitrous ECU. Um, it just comes off my steering column and it turns this on. So whenever I go ahead and turn the key into the on position, um, I get switched 12 volts to all the stuff that I need in here. So we have that coming out and it goes to the injectors. It also goes to the coils. Now these are three pin coils. There are some that are, I wanna say four pin. Um, but if you guys remember, these are the G35, or 350Z G35 coils. Um, and so these ones have, I believe the top one is signal, the middle one is a ground, and the bottom one is the switch 12 volts. Um, so just go ahead and hook those up to, to the correct ones. Um, remember this is coil 1, 3, and 5, as well as injector 1, 3, and 5. And the other side is 2, 4, and 6. You don't want to get that incorrect. But then we went ahead and take the ground for all of these. I'll come over here because this is where they're going to be. And all of the grounds, you can see there's one wire for each coil. They all come up and they're going to be grounded to our intake manifolds right up over here. Now you want to go ahead and ground these to a separate spot that you're grounding your ECU and all of the ECU grounds because those, <laughs> I guess they're a little bit of a noisy uh, ground and so it can actually mess up the ECU. So those are going to be grounding to our upper intake. Now talking about the ECU grounds, in the black harness, you guys might have remembered, I believe there are six big black wires that come out of that. And then in the gray harness, there was one big black wire that comes out of that. Those are all grounds, and we're actually gonna need to ground those properly. So currently I have them right here on my negative battery cable. This is very close to where the actual battery is, um, but really you want those on this little nut here for the negative battery cable. Um, that's pretty close, and I'm going to go ahead and switch it up because it just needed to pull up. Um, I just didn't have a lot of room, so I'm going to have to extend these just a tiny little bit. Um, but realistically, you want them to be on the actual negative battery itself. Once those are here, then you shouldn't have uh, very much signal noise, and it should be perfect for what you're going to be looking for. All right, now we're going to go ahead and talk about the rest of the sensors. So we have the crank angle sensor. We have the uh, CHTS. Mine's in the upper intake. You guys, this is probably going to be down there. Um, but it actually comes up right through here is where the harness is. Um, so we have the CAS, the CHTS. We have our TPS, which would be right here, the throttle position sensor, the MAP sensor, and then this is where I have my idle air intake, or the intake air temperature uh, sensor. It's going to be right here. Now these all need a 5 volt power. So coming out of the ECU harness, there is, actually I think I can show it to you guys, it's a gray wire. It's right in here. If you can see it, it says V-REF, V-R-E-F. This is a five volt reference voltage, and it is actually what is needed for uh, the MAP, the intake air temperature sensor, and the crank angle sensor. Um, so all of those three are going to need that five volt. So you're gonna have to split it up. Um, it's not too hard, just splice in some wires, um, and then it's gonna come over. Let's talk about the CAS real quick, crank angle sensor. So this is the wire coming off of it over here, and it comes down to this. I would unplug it, but I only have one hand free, so I'm going to try to do this as best as I can for you guys. But if you unplugged it with this on the top, then the top left, you can see I kind of labeled it right there, this is the crank signal wire. So coming out of the harness, if there is a crank wire, it's going to go to that one, the top left. And then in the top right, we have a 12 volt switched power, which is coming from that relay. And then the bottom left is a ground and that is a sensor ground. It's the white with a black stripe wire coming out of the harness. Um, that's gonna be needed to share 
by the uh, other sensors as well. So go ahead and splice into that. So it's a ground, and then in the bottom right is the cam. So again, there's a cam wire coming out of the main harness um, that will go to there. So let's go ahead and talk about the grounds real quick. So uh, for the CHTS, it has a coolant temperature wire coming out of the harness, and then the other wire is going to be a ground. That one doesn't matter the polarity, it's just a thermistor, um, so you can put them to either one. But I went ahead and used the stock wires. You can see the stock wires are yellow and black. Black is obviously ground, um, but it doesn't really matter for that one. Um, same thing for, let's come over here. This is the MAP sensor. It is a three wire. I'll go and flip it over. We have the ground on the very far right, the signal, and then a five volt. So this five volt shares the five volt with the rest of them. The signal wire just goes, it's labeled MAP. And then the ground is the, the sensor ground. Um, so again, they have that. Um, for the intake air temperature, we have a signal wire and a signal ground. And I believe that is everything. Now, if you guys remember, I'm running flex fuel. Come over here. This is my harness. I haven't actually plugged in the sensor yet, um, but it is also a three pin. Now, the flex fuel actually uses a switch 12 volt power, so you don't need to do the five volt for this one, but you do need the sensor ground for it. And then it also has a signal wire. Um, I believe mine was pin eight. Um, it wasn't labeled explicitly flex fuel. I just remembered whichever one was in pin eight is the one I put it into. Um, I'd have to check on the harness which one I, I you guys just watched the video about me pinning this, um, so you should know which one it is. Um, but that's how I did it. So now that we have all this wiring set up correctly, um, we should be good to go ahead and assemble everything. Um, so you can see what I did is I kind of tucked all the wires back underneath here, um, and it's just going to help us declutter the engine bay a little bit, kind of do a wire tuck. Um, so all these are tucked away. When we put on the upper intake manifold, which I've actually already done a few times, um, again, I wired it incorrectly. Um, it looks so clean, it looks really nice. Um, so it's going to look perfect when we do that. The other thing that I mentioned earlier is I put in a couple extra wires through the harness. I have them coiled up right here. Obviously the battery goes there, um, but they do kind of fit in this pocket right here. So I have, I think, five extra wires in there. Um, one of the wires is going to eventually run our fans. So remember our fan controllers are up here. And then one of the wires is going to run the AC. We're just gonna have to figure out which one of that is on the dash for the integration. Um, but that is pretty much everything in the engine bay, guys. Um, I already went ahead and removed the uh, PTU, the power transistor, as well as the coil, because we just don't use those anymore. Um, so you could actually just pop this cover off and shove those harnesses in there if you really wanted. Um, I might just cut them eventually. But let me go ahead and hop inside and show you how we're going to integrate this with our dash. All right, guys, here we are in the interior, and it is a wiry mess at the moment, um, but you don't have to worry too much about it. If you guys can see, most of these are the extra wires we have. Um, and then this pink wire is our O2 sensor. Um, it goes from our wideband. This is the glow shift box. If you guys remember, I wired in a wideband, and it has a wideband output. So that goes in from that into the ECU. A lot of these are going to be zip tied just to the top up over here. Um, and then I also have uh, the coolant temperature sensor, the independent coolant temperature sensor. Um, that guy right there wired into one of my extra wires. Um, it was this guy right here. So without the ex with the exception of these guys over here, um, and then this blue one was the switched off of the column, we're gonna go ahead and focus on these guys. <clears throat> so if you remember, um, when I went ahead and pulled the old harness out, um, we said that this was an important harness. Now this is labeled as 3F, I believe, in the, uh, the Z if you go to Xenon Z car, there's the reference manuals for the factory the factory service manuals. Um, that's what this connector is here. So these wire colors might change, and I don't think that the position changes, but you go on and double check. Um, so we're gonna have a few wires here that we need. So the very bottom right wire, this one right here, is for our dash temperature gauge. Um, so I have this into this pink wire. Um, this is actually O2 number two. Um, so this is O2 number one, that goes into the ECU, and then O2 number two was just an extra wire I had. Um, that one comes through here, and it plugs into this, and then in the engine bay, it also plugs into the original sensor. Um, so that one is going to give us our give our dash the correct gauge reading. Um, so we'll actually have the working gauge gauge dash dash gauge that one. And then a lot of these we actually don't use. Um, I believe one of these is AC, so <laughs> we're going to go ahead and figure that out in just a bit here. But then over on the left side, this top blue one here, this is actually our tachometer signal. Um, so this goes 
from the ECU to the dash. Um, but if you guys remember, we need to bump it up to about 100 volts. So we have an external uh, little kind of device for that. Um, I'll go ahead and show you how to wire that in just a bit. Um, but I actually just wanted to get everything working first. We don't need an actual dash gauge. Uh, we can just look on the computer. Now we're going to go ahead over one and down one. And this is a green wire with a white stripe. This one is a switched 12 volt power. And this is what we go ahead and power the ECU with. So if you guys remember, there is a red power wire on the gray connector. Um, I have it back here, and it just goes straight into the screen guy. Now it's going to go ahead and get switched power, so whenever you turn the key on, it is going to go ahead and power up the ECU, and uh, we will be able to go ahead and get everything working. So you can see I have a few wires stashed down here that I haven't uh, hooked up correctly yet. Um, we have two-step that's just going to go um, on the clutch pedal. There's a little switch. Um, so it knows that when the clutch is engaged and we're under X amount of RPM, it'll go ahead and engage two-step for us. I also have a, uh, oh, this is the tack out signal. So this is going to go tack out from here into the box, and then the box is going to go into this guy. Um, so we have a tack out, the two-step, and then the final one is actually the fuel pump wire. And this one is just like the factory, um, factory setup where it's actually a ground. Um, so it is a fuel pump negative. So you can go ahead and I believe one of these blue wires with a white stripe is the original fuel pump wire. You'd have to go ahead and trace it back because there's like two in here. There's this one and then there's that one. Um, but whichever one of those you could actually just go ahead and wire it up into this guy and it would work with the factory fuel pump if you still had it. I have the relay mod um, so mine's just set up from the ignition. Um, when I turn the key it turns the pump on. Um, but if that's the way you wanted to do it and run it through right here, you definitely could. Um, so there is all that, guys. And we are really, really close to starting. Now, uh, I'll go ahead and come over here. And I do have one more thing to say about the crank angle sensor. So if you guys, I don't remember if I told you about it yet or not. But we do have to go ahead and replace the crank angle sensor disc with a new one. Um, so it came with the kit and everything. All you have to do is just drop it in. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I already recorded the video on that. Again, I've cut all this done before and we had to come back and do this. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play that video right now and that's going to be how we're going to set the crank angle sensor. Um, and then as you can see, we already have, I have an old spark plug wire from the distributor. And uh, I went ahead and it's, already, it's got a spark plug in it right now because I'm just testing it. But we're going to go ahead and shove it down into spark number one so that we can go ahead and time this with an electronic timing light once we go ahead and get everything correctly set up. Um, so from here, you're gonna go ahead and see the crank angle installation video. All right guys, I went ahead and got the computer initially set up. I'll go ahead and run you through that in just a second. Um, but there is one more mechanical thing we have to take care of that I was reading in the instructions that we need to fix real quick. Um, I've been using my Mac for all of this and some of the like rich text stuff doesn't really show up that well. Um, so I would recommend trying to open most of this on a PC. Um, because then, uh, like in the instructions, the install instructions, um, there were pictures that I couldn't see on my Mac that I could see on a PC. Um, my Mac would not uh, connect to Tuner Studio for the Mega Squirt, uh, but my PC will. Um, so if you guys have a PC, I would really recommend using that. Um, I don't know why it works better, but it does. Um, but one thing we need to take care of is the timing. You can see right here, I have uh, the distributor cap off. I'm going to go and focus on this for you guys. All right, so you can also see I have the upper timing cover off. So what we want to go ahead and do is set this to uh, TDC, which means that cylinder number one is at top dead center. Um, so it's literally just about to start going back downwards. Now, before you could kind of use a timing light, I guess, to do this, um, but because we're doing coil on plug, um, I don't know the best way to do a timing light. Um, so I'd, I'll, I'd have to do some research on that. But for me, what I went ahead and did is I removed this upper timing cover, as you can see. And when I pull it back, you can just kind of see the edge of this. Um, and you can't see the dot right now, but there will be a dot that will line up with this little dot in the back here. See if I can see this a little bit better for you guys. All right, so if you've ever done a timing belt, you'll know what I'm talking about. That little dot back there will line up with the dot on the actual cam itself. Um, so what I do is I have a... If you can see there's a 22 mil down there on the main crank and I'm just going to go ahead and turn this over. And so the reason we're doing this is because we want this disc right here, we want this slot, the very edge of, edge of this, to be about the center of the cast. 
Um, so this is cylinder one TDC. Um, so when we turn this, we're going to have to adjust the distributor with that little adjustment screw a little bit in order to get that perfectly center. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna set this to the TDC. We're gonna be able to know because the dots on the cams are lined up there. Um, and then we'll go ahead and adjust the distributor just a tiny little bit. All right guys, I went ahead and timed it. You can see, well, you can kind of see it's a little fuzzy. It looks like the photo in the instructions now. Um, the thing I had to do, um, and I talked to Felix about this, you have to go ahead and go ahead and pull up this adjustment bolt, just completely take it out, and you're actually gonna have to pull the distributor out a little bit, spin it to where it needs to be, and then set it back down. Um, so the place that says top, it does have to be on the top um, so that it looks like this. And then you can kind of see over here how that second line is showing now, just barely out the other side. Um, so this is going to get us in the ballpark of where we need to be. Um, the adjustment is maxed out right now, and it's kind of between, um, so like the length, the arc length of that bigger uh, loop on the outside is kind of the length of a single tooth because I was kind of getting it in between. Um, so either it was maxed out on that far side or it was maxed out on the close side in order to get here. So when we go ahead and time it with a timing light, um, we'll go ahead and see if we need to adjust it anymore. Um, but this is where I'm leaving it for now. It should be roughly good to where we need it to be. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, put the dust shield back on, and then put my cap back on, and we should be ready to start this up. All right, guys, well, you can see I got everything back together, and I just wanted to run over a few things really quick. Um, so I wanted to run over, this is where I have the uh, ground for the coils right up here. I was trying to aim for this one right on top here, which was a stock grounding point, um, but <laughs> the wires weren't long enough, so that's okay. Um, you can see I have the intake air temperature right there. Next to it is the brake booster, and underneath right there is the map. Um, and then here is the TPS. You only need this bottom one, not the top one. And then coming over around this way, um, this is my blow-off valve. And then um, back in the back, these are for like HVAC, and then this is the fuel pressure regulator. And that is pretty much all of the vacuum lines that I have attached to this. Everything else is blocked off at this point. Um, now for the coils, um, I went ahead and made, it's kind of hard to see I got these guys laying around. I made some little aluminum brackets that come off the valve cover, and really it's just to hold these down. Um, so the spark plugs, the way they sit into them, they just kind of have to be pushed up a little bit because there's a spring in there. Um, so really the brackets, they don't bolt into these little holes on the coils. It just holds them down and keeps them in place. Um, then for this one up here, I went ahead and made this bracket up off the water filler neck. And then the other side, I think, I don't remember if I told you guys or not, um, but there are these little tabs here. Um, so I went ahead and just drilled a hole and then put a bolt through because they are the absolute, absolute perfect size um, in place. Um, so this one and that one both have little uh, tabs and then the back one it's actually got a bracket that comes off of where the thing is grounded and then goes all the way down and just holds that coil there um, so that is pretty much it guys next episode we're going to be firing this up um, it, it's been a lot of work um, it's very cold outside so it has been a lot of cold work for me um, so hopefully next time I'll be able to go ahead and turn the key and get it going um, we should be able to have the timing to work out um, you know with sticking the uh, the coil on and everything um, so hopefully all that works out for you guys as well um, and next time we'll go ahead and start up the Z so if you guys have any questions about what I've done today um, the build how to wire everything um, definitely contact me and I want to give a huge thanks to Felix Hamilton um, at Hamilton who provided the mega squirt first of all um, but also he's just been absolutely super helpful to get all my questions answered um, I, I, I'll be honest, I haven't read like the 300 page user manual um, and it explains most of my questions in there I'm sure, um, but he's been very patient and helpful with me anyways um, in order to get all of this wiring done correctly. Um, so there you go guys, I hope that this was very helpful and informative for you guys and I will see you guys next time.